Hello, my name is Travis Monk. This is one of a series of videos on different aspects of cell biology. In this video, I will be describing the mathematic calculations involving water and solute potential. Water potential describes the tendency of water to move from one location to another based upon osmosis, the diffusion of water, and pressure. It is very important for a cell's survival and relates to maintaining homeostasis. The picture on this slide shows the movement of water into and out of cells in different types of environments. When calculating water potential, as described on the introductory slide, there are two pieces of information that you need to know. First, there's the solute potential. What this really means is, due to diffusion, where will water or the solute naturally move? As shown in this picture, water would naturally move from the highest concentration, the side designated pure water, to an area of lower concentration, the side designated solution. Second, there is pressure potential. Pressure potential takes into account the differences in pressure inside and outside of the cell. If you filled up a balloon with air by breathing into it, the pressure inside might be much higher than it is on the outside of the balloon. Given a week or two, what you'd expect to have happen is the balloon would shrink in size due to the difference in pressure. Uh, gases would eventually escape from the inside. When plant cells use central vacuoles to increase the pressure against the inside of their cell walls, there is a significant pressure potential. In the picture shown here, two things are happening. First, the pure water wants to diffuse into the cell due to solute potential. This is shown with the yellow arrows. On the other hand, the central vacuole is filled with water and nutrients. The pressure is higher inside the cell than it is on the outside. The blue arrows in this picture show where water would typically move because of this pressure difference. This leads us to the next slide, the equation for water potential. The image on this slide shows the equation necessary to calculate water potential. Water potential is the sum of the pressure potential and the solute potential. In the previous slide, there was a solute potential that would move water into the cell and pressure potential that would move water out of the cell. When you add these two values together, you'll end up with a net direction that water will move. Water will always move towards the area of a lower water potential. One very important thing to recognize when solving water potential problems involves what the phrase in equilibrium means. When a cell is in equilibrium, that means that the water potential is zero, as I indicated here. This means that there is no net osmosis. Water flows in each direction equally. One reason that this is important to recognize is that if you know that a cell is in equilibrium and that the solute potential is negative one, then the pressure potential must be positive one because the sum of solute potential and pressure potential is zero. One visual depiction of the importance of water potential in real life is provided on this slide. Plants draw up water from the ground through the roots, the xylem, and eventually the leaf where it is needed for the process of photosynthesis that will be described next unit. The reason that water naturally moves from one location to the next is because of water potential. Water moves towards locations with more and more negative water potential values. The picture on this slide provides an example of what might happen if a plant cell is placed in a beaker of distilled water. Distilled water is pure water. Pure water has no solute or anything dissolved in it, so its solute potential is zero. Since there is no outside force acting on the water, the pressure potential would also be zero. Water potential is equal to pressure potential plus solute potential. In the case of the distilled water, the water potential would be zero plus zero, or zero. If the central vacuole of a plant is not full, if there is no force acting on a typical plant cell, the pressure potential is zero. Since there are many dissolved materials within a plant cell, sugars, proteins, lipids, and the like, there would be a high solute potential. Solute potentials are always negative. In this case, the solute potential given is negative two. Again, adding up the two values, zero and negative two, you would end up with a sum of negative two for the water potential of the center cell. To reiterate what was described on the previous slide, water will always move towards the more negative water potential. In this case, the water potential of the distilled water is zero, and the plant cell is negative two, so water will try to move into the plant cell. It will continue to move into the plant cell until the water potentials are the same. What would happen in this scenario, if you put a plant cell into a beaker full of distilled water, is that the central vacuole of the plant cell would fill with water more and more. Eventually, it would be so full that it would have a significant pressure on the inside of the cell pushing outwards. 
It's called turgor pressure called, caused by the vacuole filling up. When the pressure on the inside of the cell, the pressure potential, increases to the point that it equals the value of the solute potential, the cell would reach equilibrium. What that means is that water would move into and out of the cell at the same rate. This is one reason that central vacuoles are so important to plants. They help maintain homeostasis by regulating water levels in the plant. We'll take a look at one final practice problem, incorporating everything from the previous slides. This problem states, a plant cell with a solute potential of negative 7.5 keeps a constant volume when immersed in an open beaker solution of pure water. What is the solution's water potential? To solve this problem, you have to use the equation found at the bottom of this slide. Two important pieces of information involve the fact that the cell is in an open beaker and it contains pure water. When trying to solve water potential problems, you need to know the difference in solute and pressure potentials inside and outside the cell in order to determine the flow of water. Since the beaker is open, the pressure potential would be zero. Since this is pure water, the solute potential is zero. Since the water potential outside of the cell is zero, you now only need to know the water potential of the cell itself in order to determine which direction water will flow. The only value given for the cell is the solute potential, listed as negative 7.5. This piece of information is important for the equation found below. The second piece of information provided is a bit tougher to pick out from the problem. One statement is that the cell keeps a constant volume when immersed into a solution. Since there is no change in volume, what this means is that there is no net diffusion. Since the water potential of the solution is zero and there is no net movement of water, the solution is in equilibrium, that means that the water potential of the cell must be zero. Since you're only left with one unknown variable in this equation, the pressure potential of the cell, you can now solve for it. To balance this equation, the pressure potential of the cell must be 7.5, which would be the answer to this problem. This sort of pressure could be provided by cell structures such as central vacuoles, which can be filled with water. That is the end of this video explaining water potential, providing examples of how to solve problems mathematically. If you're interested in learning about any other concepts pertaining to cell biology or any other themes of biology, please subscribe to my channel. Thank you.